Do you use HubSpot for sales and want to build some workflows to automate some of the day-to-day -day stuff your sales team has to do? Well, I'm going to show you seven must-have sales workflows inside of HubSpot in today's HubSpot hack. All right, folks, before we get too into the weeds, I should mention that this is a professional or enterprise hub feature only. So if you're using at least one of those hubs, then we're ready to get started, continue watching. We'll build up these workflows and we're gonna be building them live together during this call. So feel free to click along. If I'm moving too fast, feel free to slow down the video or pause as we go ahead. But these are the seven must have sales workflows for every HubSpot portal that's using HubSpot for sales. The first one that we're gonna build is one for lead routing. So click into our first workflow here for lead routing. So the example that I'm gonna use here is when a new lead comes in or an existing contact comes to your website, fills out a demo request form, fills out a contact us form, what you want to do is rotate those leads to your sales reps and notify them that they have a new person to reach out to. So this is a contact-based workflow. So when you click to build a new workflow, this is contact-based. And your triggers are going to be when an event occurs. And then you can search here for form submissions. So now that we have uh, has completed a form submission, we can click to add criteria to get more specific with it. And we can say the form name is any of, and then just look for whatever contact form, demo form that you have on your website currently, and add that as an enrollment trigger. Now, it is important that you're gonna wanna make sure that re-enrollment is on for this, because if somebody fills out your form today and they come back months from now, years from now, whatever it is, you're gonna wanna make sure that they go through this workflow more than once. So we're gonna turn that on and press save. So now that we have our enrollment criteria, what we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that our um, this is evenly rotated to our sales reps. If you have territories or any other criteria that you wanna to use to enroll to your sales reps, you can definitely do that. In this example, though, I'm gonna show you how to evenly rotate it to everyone in your sales team. So we're gonna click the plus sign to add an action, and we are going to search for rotate record to owner. And we wanna use the contact owner field. And then you have an option here to if you wanna overwrite the existing contact owner or not when this comes through. Basically what this does is if this is known, it will not overwrite it, it will be uh, stay assigned to the person that it goes to now. And then you have the option here to choose between rotating between specific users or between teams. So um, if you're using teams, I highly recommend doing so because if you have a sales team inside of HubSpot, you can rotate all of your leads to your sales team. And what's great then is as your sales team changes, is maybe people leave your company or you hire more, all you have to do is add them to the sales team and then they'll be added to this workflow and then they'll be getting leads. So we'll click save. And now we're rotating our leads to everyone within our sales team. The next thing we wanna do is create a task for our sales team. So to notify them to reach out to the new lead. So we'll click that plus sign here and then we'll go to CRM and we want to create a task. And the title will just say, you know, you can use personalization tokens over here on the right hand side, like put the person's company name, their first name, you know, where they work, things like that. If you wanted to, I'm just gonna put, um, you've been assigned a new lead. We definitely don't want this to be assigned three days later. We want them to reach out as soon as possible. So we'll change the due date to immediately. Add any other information you want here in the notes, like what information they filled out inside the form, maybe what form they filled out. Um, and then we wanna make sure that we assign this task all the way down here at the bottom to the existing owner of the contact because that's what's being uh, assigned one step before this, they will get assigned and then the next step they will get a notification to reach out to this contact. So there we have it, that's our first workflow. Uh, first workflow is done, lead routing when someone comes in from a contact us form, rotating it to your sales team. All you need to do then is click to review and publish and then your workflow is ready to go. Workflow number two, let's click into this. This is also a contact-based workflow if you're building them from scratch. And this workflow is going to notify your sales team if somebody's looking at a high intent page on your website. So we're gonna to click to add our enrollment triggers. We're gonna do when filter criteria is met. And then we're gonna scroll down here to page views. And we wanna change this first status from contact as viewed at least one URL equal to to contact as viewed at least one URL containing. So the example that we're gonna use here is gonna be the simple strap pricing page, which contains pricing in the URL path. So we're gonna add in pricing and we are going to save that. 
And then we want to make sure that re-enrollment is on for this again. So we will do re-enrollment is on and save that. And the next thing we want to do is notify the contact owner that this person has viewed your page. So you might want to add some other filter criteria, like only notify this if it's an open opportunity or sales qualified lead or existing customer or things like that. So you're, uh, if your sales team's getting too many notifications, but this is a good starting point. You can go from here to see if they're getting, if they're getting too much, then you can narrow it down. So the next thing we want to do is add in a task. So we'll click CRM, we'll create a task and we'll say contact has viewed pricing page. We'll set it due immediately. And then you can put any notes in here, like give them a call, send them an email. And again, make sure that you're assigning this task to the contact owner of that contact. Or if you wanted to do any specific users, you can do that as well. Click save. All that's left to do is review and publish this workflow. And then workflow number two is complete. As people view that high intent pricing page, they will be, uh, your sales team will be notified. Workflow number three, create deals when meetings are booked. Now there's a couple different ways that you can build this. I'm gonna show you the easiest way that I like to do it for some of my clients, which is when a meeting link uh, is used. So we're gonna go to our set up our triggers and we're gonna do um, when an event occurs and we're gonna search for form submissions again. Then we're gonna add criteria and we're gonna do that the form name and then just search for the meeting link. So meeting links actually count as form submissions inside of HubSpot. So if your sales team have any specific links and things like that, you can use them as part of this workflow. So grab any meeting links that you wanna use and click save. And again, this is something that you might want re-enrollment on for. So we'll turn re-enrollment on. Now that we have our enrollment triggers, we can click the plus sign here and we can add in the create deal step to create a record and then search for deal. And we can assign it to you know, a specific user or we'll do the existing owner of the contact in this, in this case. We'll give the deal a name. So we're gonna use um, some personalization tokens that we put in the person's first name, last name, and we'll call it new deal. We have to pick the pipeline stage that we want this to go into. So say this is a, they booked a consultation, we'll put it into consulta consultation scheduled. For close date, you're definitely gonna wanna change this from calendar date to days after action. So I recommend doing some uh, research into what your average close time is, 30 days, 60 day, 90 days, 120. Um, for example, I like to do 90 days. And then if you have like an average deal amount, you can put that in here or you can leave it in blank for your sales team to enter later. We just scroll down, check our association. So the contact and role will be associated to this deal. The company will as well. And then we are all set. So we'll click save. Now when those sales meeting links are used, a deal will be automatically created for your sales reps. So they don't have to do anything manually anymore, saving them tons of time. All we have to do is click review and publish and then workflow three is done. All right, workflow number four. This is a deal notification workflow, so it is deal-based, and we are going to notify our sales reps if they have an open deal that is missing next activity. So there is a next activity property inside of HubSpot that we're gonna use. That auto-populates for us if there's a future task, call, meeting scheduled on this deal, um, and if there is not one, then that next activity date field will be blank. Now, this is something that we want to make sure our sales reps have because if they have an open deal without any sort of next steps scheduled, they should schedule something, whether it's a task to call or email, whether it's a week from now or a month from now, they should have some sort of next step set on that deal. So our enrollment triggers are going to be when a filter is met and we're going to say deal properties. We're going to say next activity date is unknown. Uh, we also want to make sure that re-enrollment is on for this workflow as well, because if it happens more than once, we want to make sure that our sales reps get uh, reminded. So this workflow will enroll immediately once that next activity date is known. So say, for example, we have a call or a meeting, that next activity date clears out, they will get en enrolled in this immediately. So what we're going to do is just give your sales reps a one day grace period. So we're going to say delay for a set amount of time and we're going to say one day we're then going to do an if then branch so we're going to search for branch 
and we're going to say and or logic. And we're going to say um, next activity is known. And we're going to call this other one next activity unknown. And then in this criteria here, we're going to just want to say deal properties next activity date is known and then click save and it creates our if then branch for us. So what we're doing here is if um, during that one day delay that we have, that next activity date does become known because they've scheduled a call, put a task on it, whatever. And we'll go down this left hand side where we're going to let the workflow end. If they haven't done it, and that next activity date is unknown, they'll go down this right hand side, where then we are going to create a task. Um, we're going to call it next activity date, unknown, scheduled next steps. We're going to have that do immediately. And we're going to assign this to the existing owner of the deal and deal owner, notify them to schedule next steps. It'll create a task for them. Now all we have to do is click scroll up, click to review and publish, and then our workflow will be live. And we're done with workflow number four. Sales workflow number five. If a deal close date is in the past, we obviously want our sales team to update that because if it's still open, but the expected close date is in the past, that can't happen. Uh, expected close dates should always be in the future. This is important for you know revenue forecasting, um, keeping a sales a clean sales pipeline and things like that. So our enrollment trigger is going to be when filter criteria is met. Again, this is a deal-based workflow and we'll do deal properties and we'll say um, close date is more than one day ago. And we're also gonna add in the, the trigger for deal properties. Um, we're gonna search for open. Say if is open is equal to one. So this is a, um, a zero one search for, if it's open, it will be one. If it's closed, will be zero. We only obviously want this for deals that are so open. We don't want them getting reminded to update a close date for deals that have already been closed, one or closed lost. So we'll click save, and then we can create a task again for our sales reps to update the close dates. We'll say deal close date in the past. Please update, we'll be kind to our sales team. And we want this to be done immediately. And we will assign this to an existing owner of the deal, to the deal owner. Now again, this is another workflow that we're gonna to wanna to click into the enrollment triggers and make sure that re-enrollment is on. Because if this happens more than once, we want to be notified that the deal close dates in the past and that they need to update it for forecasting, clean pipeline, whatever it is. All that's left to do now is click review and publish and this workflow will be live inside your portal. Workflow number six, we are getting towards the end. Set deals as one. So this is um, only applicable for people that are using um, HubSpot quotes, HubSpot payments, things like that. Any sort of automation um, involved. Well, there could be other things that you're using as well, but the examples I'm gonna give you here are gonna be if you're using HubSpot payments or HubSpot quotes. So this is a deal-based workflow. And we're gonna set up our, our enrollment triggers for when a filter criteria is met. And we wanna change what we're filtering on to be an associated quote. And we wanna search for e-sign, and we wanna say e-sign date is known. That means that the people who have needed to sign it have signed it. And we also wanna add in an or statement in case you are using HubSpot payments um, and say that the filter on the associated payment, and we'll do the date, the payment date is also known. Either one of these um, will be the enrollment criteria here. So you might need to uh, do some branches here if you have multiple pipelines, like say for, uh, you know, I'll give you an example here. So for a branch, I'm only gonna do, this is our test pipeline, so we have a lot of different pipelines, but we'll just say if the deal pipeline is our demo sales pipeline, and then so we'll call this our demo sales pipeline. We'll also add in another branch for this pipeline here is any of our test pipeline. We'll call this one our test pipeline and click save. So now we have multiple branches. So this is because we, if the deal becomes closed one, we wanna make sure it goes into the correct closed one stage for the correct pipeline. So now we can add in the step to um, CRM, we want to set property value 
and we want to set the deal stage to closed one. So we have our demo sales pipeline closed one stage. And then we want to do the same one here for pipeline, for our test pipeline. So set property value, stage to test pipeline. So we'll search tests and then go to our closed one stage. And now this workflow is set up. So there's no need for a re-enrollment in this one. Deals should only really be closed one once. All that's left to do is click to review and publish and then your workflow will be live. Sales workflow number seven, our last one. And it's by far my favorite and a simple strat favorite is a Slack notification when a deal is won. Now you don't have to be using Slack. You could be using um, Teams or any sort of other um, messenger email for this as well if you wanted to. But basically a way of shouting out to the team that, that a deal has closed. So our enrollment trigger is going to be when a filter criteria is met, and we'll say deal properties, and we can just search for closed one, say is closed one is true. And this will work for then all of our pipelines if you have multiple pipelines. And then we can say our next step. So we're gonna do it for Slack, for example, is to send a Slack notification. So you can send to specific users, existing owners, but we're gonna do it to a channel. And we have a wins channel here at SimpleStrat where it'll now shout out the wins channel and we can put in anything in the message that we want to, like a new closed one deal. Who? And you can also add in something like a, like a fun GIF. So I'm actually gonna hop over to our live portal um, and show you what that looks like inside of our live HubSpot. So you can see within our notification, we have the specific pipeline, the amount, the deal name, what the type of engagement is, the deal type, so if it's new or existing business, and then also this URL here um, sends out a fun little GIF. We change it every single month, and I'll even show you what it looks like here in our Slack channel. You see it sends a fun little celebration GIF whenever a new deal is won. All right, thanks for watching. Those are seven workflows that every sales team using HubSpot should have. We hope you like this video. Make sure you like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Thanks for watching and happy HubSpotting.